Great, we're recording now. So welcome back, Professor Alessandro. Sorry, I'm gonna end it one sec. I'm gonna start it from zero. <laughs> yeah. I'm get rid of that bit. I was gonna call you doctor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're recording now. So welcome back, uh, Professor Alessandro. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us here at Substrata. And for those of uh, for, for those people watching that are not familiar with you, I wanted to give like a brief bio. So Professor Alessandro Vincarelli is a full professor at the University of Glasgow, uh, where he is with both the School of Computing Science and the Institute of Neuroscience and Psychology. Uh, professor Vincarelli also sits on Substrata Advisory Board. So thank you so much. Um, again, for finding some time to, to chat with us. And, and today I wanted to speak a little bit about the business side of social signals and nonverbal communication. And in particular, how can we leverage nonverbal cues to persuade and to become more influential in business? Um, we see loads of tips all over like YouTube, move like this, add like that, you know, especially there's a lot, also a lot of like, I guess like a alpha male, be a leader, be a closer, be a deal maker. This is how you should move. This is how you present. And, you know, there's lots of analysis of like body language, how you should email, etc. I mean, is mimicking someone you admire even a good way to get started, like to become more persuasive and influential? Well, the interesting thing is that persuasion is a phenomenon that takes two persons, right? It's not just about being persuasive in absolute, but being capable to persuade the particular individuals we are trying to persuade at a certain point. So once again, it's more of a matter of, a, of an interaction point of view. Uh, so for sure, to me, the real point is to create the conditions for the value of your message passing through. So fundamentally, to build trust, uh, to build uh, the impression of uh, competence, to show that you are a person that talks in the interest of the people you have in front of you and not only in the, the terms of the interest for uh, yourself, uh, to the ability of being a friend to the people you are around. So brief, to convey all those signals, all those impressions that have to do with uh, people being ready to open to you. So from this point of view, essentially, uh, it is possible somewhat to ensure that your nonverbal communication shows that you are a person that can be trusted, uh, that is competent, that is acting on a common interest and it is not selfish, and so on. And it is through that, right, that uh, it is possible to ensure that you can be more persuasive. And for sure, technology from this point of view can be, can be of help because it can show us mistakes, it can show us error that we do in essentially conveying different impressions. So in giving the impression that we are not competent when we are, of giving the impression that we are not trustworthy when we are, and so on. So essentially, technology can help us a lot uh, to do it. And what is interesting, it can help us to do that in context, meaning always in relationship to the people we are interacting with in that moment. So the idea, for example, of trying to imitate a person known to be persuasive, I don't know, a famous politician, a famous uh, actor, and so on. Well, you never know whether the people you have in front of you might not like that famous politician, might not like that famous actor, or might belong to a culture which is different, to a mentality which is different, and so not be sensitive to the same type of message. So I think in particular where technology can help us a lot is exactly helping us to be the right person in that particular setting. So not in general, but be it during that interaction. And getting, for example, how do they feel about us in that moment? Do I have to fix something, right? So from this point of view, it can help us in a process of adaptation that helps us exactly to show that we are trustworthy, to show that we are competent, to show that we it's not about persuading them, but it is because the message we are sending is good for them. And so that is uh, fundamentally creating the condition for persuasion to take place. And I guess also like in every interaction, we have to adjust that message and adjust, constantly adjust, adjust that page based on how the other person, based on the, the feedback that I'm getting from the other side, right? Whether that feedback is an email or not responding to an email or a smile or someone shouting or whatever. Like I, I constantly have to like adjust my pitch 
but are some people better than others naturally at reading that feedback accurately? Are some people more attuned to those nuances and those social cues to read between the lines or is that something that we can learn? Uh, for sure, there is, uh, like in many other aspects, right, there is a natural distribution of skills. So we have people that are better at playing basket than others, you know, and there is not so much. And then there is training. So starting from the basis where we are, we can possibly improve through work, through experience, through, uh, through, 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 through training and so on. So from the point of view, social skills, all social skills somewhat are naturally distributed. There is an ability we all have. And then, of course, we have the superstars, those who seem to be very good, that they can interact very well with everybody, you know, those who are extremely good. And we have on the, on the opposite extreme people that are always socially awkward because they seem to be uh, totally unable to really figure out what goes on around them, right? Without, of course, going through the pathological aspects. So there are people that actually, uh, let's say, for example, the people on the autistic spectrum that really are in those conditions because of a pathology from this point of view. Uh, so from this point of view, you know, our natural skills can be refined, can be helped. And once again, technology can play a role, in particular in this type of training. Or, or, or if not a training, it can be a support in our own activities when we interact with others. <clears throat> and they can help us to perform better during an interaction. Right? Like by performing better, it always means to send our message in the way we want to send it and to ensure that we are not misunderstood, that our value as persons, as sellers, as professionals, etc., in any type of business interaction comes out uh, without obstacles due to our inability to show it, if you want. They can help us to make it evident to others. Right. I mean, for business people, you touched upon it, but for business people, we have this idea of like, the, you know, the, the deal maker or the natural born salesperson. We, even from movies like Wolf of Wall Street or, you know, or like uh, the Warren Buffett. Like we have like these, these role models that we, we just imagine these like incredible negotiators that read the room, know exactly when to sell, know exactly when to buy, know exactly when to pitch. Um, you know, are there any key social signals or styles that you can attribute, or maybe based on some of the research you've done, um, that we can attribute to like top deal makers or business leaders? You know, you were talking also a lot about like exuding confidence, uh, competence, you know, just being reassured, like, uh, like, how, how, what, do you have some examples of like, what are typical traits of these top deal makers? Yeah, let's say something extremely interesting to see in all the people that are particularly good at, uh, at selling, let's say, so at, at, at finding a good compromise that makes everybody happy around the table, is the ability to empathize with others. What does it mean? The point is really to establish a good contact with the people you are trying to involve in your uh, in your deals. And from the point of view, to convey really that impression that you are working with someone that is working in the common interest, right? A good deal is a deal that makes everybody happy. And fundamentally, empathy, which means to show that you worry about others, so that you are open to others, that you are not in competition, right? It is not an attempt to uh, somewhat get something extra out of uh, what you can do, right? So from that point of view, empathy is this major channel that makes everybody feel, okay, we are working here around a common interest, right? We are trying to do something that will make us all, uh, all happy. And so from this point of view, smiling, showing that you have pleasure in being with others, that is extremely important because automatically they will be pleased to be with you. Openness, ability to listen, not just to make your points, ability to adapt to others, ability to, uh, to try always to find, not to impose your own point of view, but to try to find a point of view which is good for everybody. So these are all those possibilities that help us to feel uh, appreciated, to put us in comfort, uh, to have the feeling that actually our point of view is interesting, and ultimately that in the deal, our interests are being actually put in the right place. And so that at the end, the deal, that the agreement that, uh, that we come to, it is something that is good for all parties and not only for one, uh, for one party, right? Mm -hmm. So much more than a model based on competition and simply trying to be stronger or tougher than the other. So really the impression I always had, the, 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 the observation I always had when dealing with uh, uh, good sellers from a professional point of view, so in my type of research, 
is always really the ability to establish an empathic communication with their uh, with their customers right this ability to enter in contact and say i'm here to help i'm here to do your interest not just mine right and and that always works very well i have to say and in uh th that's really interesting but i guess also like many of the the moments to create that level of empathy and more human connection used to be like outside of the negotiation table, right? Like they used to be like, that's why like many times you go for dinner, you speak about your family, you know, that's where you connect more of an, on a human and an emotional level. Yes. So how do you build that level of empathy, trust through empathy and all the other attributes when you're having like uh, trying to close a deal via email or via WhatsApp or via Zoom or like in a digital environment in this kind of like COVID world? Is there something that business leaders can do to, I don't know, build that level of trust and empathy faster uh, with uh, being like in this little box or being like, you know, via email to just like build that rapport quickly and assert their communication? Well, you know, you have to consider that really as a, as a, as an animal species, communication is something that we cannot resist. It's like sugar, right? Uh, we are all, we all like sweets, right? We cannot resist sweets. Well, social interaction is exactly the same way. It is something that we cannot resist. So it is never inappropriate to have that little personal attention, you know, simply saying, I hope you are okay. I hope this message finds you well. It's really this attempt to show that you care about the persons you have uh, around. And even in the most formal letter, etc., adding a little bit of a human touch here and there, it is what helps you exactly to establish this type of empathy. Being personal, for example, that is very much important, right? If you send a message, a letter that really sounds like uh, uh, this is a copy I have for everybody and, uh, you know, I just change the name at the beginning and so on. Showing that there is a little bit of an adaptation to the person you are sending it, makes it more personal. It is exactly what helps to establish this type of empathy. Clearly, it is more challenging than how it is in face-to-face -face or more interactive uh, uh, communication channels like the one we are using in this moment, because, of course, we do not have at disposition there all our natural equipment, which is extremely, extremely effective, right? But the point is, in an email, even in a written communication, like make the smile pass uh, pass through. It can be a language which is slightly less formal than necessary, right? Being a little bit more individual. It is the attention to the individual thing that has to do with your interlocutor and not with anybody else and so on. And, you know, it doesn't need that much, actually. It can be quite uh, quite effective with really a little touch here and there. You don't really need to, 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 to put a lot simply because we are very sensitive to that, right? We are built to enjoy empathy. We are built to enjoy social interaction. And so even the tiniest little sign of enjoyment from that point of view is going to be reciprocated, actually. That's amazing. I mean, and even I read an article, I can't remember from who, but they said reading, especially for email communications, reading is the new listening. So yes. actually, you know, it's a luxury when you realize that the person at the other end just reads your, the email that you send them in full, uh, you know, how many times you've sent an email only to get a response that's got nothing to do with what you asked. Yeah. So, you know, if I said like, you know, do you want to meet Wednesday or Thursday? She's like, yes, great. Like, well, <laughs> so that building that empathy starts with like, you know, in, 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 I guess like in real personal communication or Zoom is like being like a good active listening but I guess like on email, it would be like active reading and that, that's, a, that's showing respect and that's building empathy and rapport. So it's all those little touches that I guess makes the, the other person or the person you're negotiating with feel human, which yeah. is what you were getting, getting to. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Brilliant. So thank you so much, Alessandro. Always a pleasure, always so many insights. So I'm really very much looking forward to chatting more and exploring more, more fields and subjects because it's always um, a real pleasure to have you with us. And thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Pleasure for me. Thank you. Thanks, bye.